Well, hi, how are you doing? It's good to see you again. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at uh, absolute age and how we determine absolute age uh, in this particular lesson. And this rock that you see in front of you, it may not look like much, but this is part of one of the, uh, the oldest rocks uh, on Earth. This is about 3.8 billion years old. And when you consider that the Earth is about 4.6 billion, this takes you almost all the way back to the beginning. So this is uh, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, chunks of uh, rock here on Earth. And so what we're going to look at is how did they determine that? How did they find that out? And so we're looking at absolute age. Now when we're dealing with absolute age, one of the things you need to realize is that to determine they use something called radiometric dating. And you have to understand this idea of a parent isotope and a daughter isotope. Isotopes are just uh, different versions of an element. So you can have isotopes of carbon, you can have isotopes of uranium, you can have isotopes of lead, you can have different versions of these elements. And when the rock first forms, you can see that they're all the parent isotopes. That if we look in, the, in here, we find that at least the atoms that we're dealing with, they're all of the kind that belong to this, whatever, this parent isotope, whatever it happens to be in this case. Then as time goes along, so sometime later, we end up with the, rock, with the same rock, but some of these atoms have decayed and turned into something new. For example, carbon would turn into nitrogen, or uranium would eventually turn into lead. So this atom is still there. It just happens doesn't happen to be uranium anymore. It is now an atom of lead. And so you can see sometime later, we have some parent, the red, and some daughter, the blue. And if we go even later, now we can see it's mostly the daughter isotopes and just a, a few of the parent. And so a geologist is coming along who's taking a look at this rock and wants to know how old it is. They can look at these a ratio of the parent and daughter isotope and they know, they can see if it's if it's um, just parent isotopes, that rock is just newly formed. And uh, if it's a mixture, we know it's a little bit later in life, and if it's mostly the daughter isotopes, we can determine that it's even later still. Now, these later still, laters and later stills, to understand how much later, you have to understand the concept of a half-life. And so we're going to get to, into that, and then we'll come back to this. First, we want to take a look at what I meant by decay. This is the a model of the nucleus of an atom. and has protons and neutrons in it. And if this... Um, atom at this particular isotope is unstable, if it breaks down, the kind of thing that you see happening looks something like this, where it begins losing particles. And we'll talk more about what those are next year when we deal with chemistry. Um, but it's losing these particles, and as it lose particles, it actually turns into something new. It turns into a, a different element, because the element is determined by how many protons are actually in the nucleus. If you have one number, you're one element. You have a different number, you're another element. So as they lose protons, they become a different substance, which is kind of cool. So, But this is what we mean by radioactive decay, is this nucleus falling apart until it comes down, becomes something that's stable, that doesn't fall apart anymore. Well, if we look at the substances, we can see that um, something like potassium-40 turns into argon-40. The, the number is just a count the number of protons and neutrons. Something like uranium-235 turns down into lead. Carbon-14 is one of the more famous examples. It turns into nitrogen-14. And the amount of time that it, that it takes to do that is recorded by something that's called the half-life. And the half-life is how long it takes, is the probability for how long it takes take for about half of the atoms to have broken down um, and be, to decay into the new substance. So for about half of the carbon-14 atoms to turn into uh, nitrogen-14 atoms takes about 5,730 years. Okay. Uh, something that's longer than uranium into lead, that takes about 704 million years. So this half-life is the probability that it takes for um, about half of the atoms to turn in, go, to go from um, the parent to the daughter. Okay. So now we can go back to uh, this other 
uh, drawing and now we can see if this was the carbon to nitrogen to get from here to here it's about 5700 years 5700 years and maybe if this is half again that's another 5700 years so from here to here is almost 6000 years here to here is almost another 6000 years so if we walk come along we see the rock looking like like this we know that that's almost 12,000 years old when we look at that parent-daughter uh, ratio. Okay, I just showed that to you. So here's a bunch of atoms. In this particular example, the half-life is about two seconds. So every about every two seconds, half of them will have turned and will have decayed. And, and in this case, they happen to go away. Um, but um, in the reality, they're they're turning into something else. They're not just disappearing. Um, but notice that it doesn't happen like nothing happens then in two seconds half of them are gone and then two seconds later another half of them um, suddenly disappear but instead they're kind of constantly going away and after about two seconds about half of them are gone and after another two seconds about half of them are gone and after another two seconds about half of them are gone and so then it starts disappearing then you get another half and another half and another half okay so run that for you one more time so about every two seconds, about half of them disappear. Right. It has a half-life of about two seconds. And, and again, they're not, in real life, they're not just really going away. They're turning into something new. Okay. So when you look at the graph, we can see at the beginning, at zero time, it's all, get my cursor back here, it's all parent. Um, atoms and then after the, about the first generation the first half-life you got about 50 50 mixture and another half-life you're going to have um, about half of those will, will go again so this is 50 50 this is 75 25 and then after about uh, after another half-life then half of those go again and it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going as the number of re reduces okay which brings us back uh, to our uh, Grand Canyon that we started with in the last video and this is a picture of the Vishnu uh, basement rocks in the Grand Canyon and these are uh, igneous and metamorphic rocks and these are in the neighborhood of one and a half, one point eight uh, billion years old uh, and these are rocks that we can age using this radiometric uh, d dating process where they look and they see how much of one element has decayed into another element and then work back through the half-lives and determine that it's about 1.8 billion years old uh, for these Vishnu basement rocks. This doesn't work with sedimentary rocks because sedimentary rocks um, what you'd end up aging is the pieces of the sedimentary rock, the chunks that make it up. Um, there are some ways that it works with metamorphic but it's not easy but this, this radiometric dating is uh, mostly used with um, igneous rocks. Can't really be used with sedimentary rock. Very difficult with metamorphic rock. We're really looking at the igneous rocks. Uh, and with some t other techniques thrown in there, they can get some uh, metamorphic rocks lens too. Okay, so just a quick review. Uh, we saw some of the oldest rocks here on Earth, about 3.8 billion out of the Earth's history of 4.6 billion. We talked about absolute age and they determined through radiometric dating. Um, where we watch the parent isotope uh, break down into the daughter isotopes and we look back at the proportion of the two and we'll, we'll in class we'll practice uh, the half-life part so it's okay if you don't quite uh, have that now I understand the concept but in terms of doing the math that'll be an in-class practice we saw uh, the decay happen in the nucleus and that some substances, the, rate, the parent breaks down into the daughter and the half-life is about how long it takes the probability that half of them uh, will have uh, decayed and we watched that animation uh, so we can we could see an example of them decaying um, 
and then we finished up taking a look at the basement rocks in the Grand Canyon that are about 1.8 billion years old that were uh, um, aged, their absolute age was found through this radiometric dating process. Okay, If you have any problems, watch it back through again or watch the sections you need back through again. Make sure that you uh, do the practice questions uh, and I'll see you in class.